All right, guys, welcome to this new video, which is part one of a series where I want to show you how you can make such a medieval stone wall. And in the process, we will be using Blender for the block out, ZBrush for sculpting, Instalot for remeshing and baking, and Instamat for texturing. And I'm currently here in Unreal Engine 5, where I made this small scene setup, which is really nothing special. I have just placed my wall, then took a few plant assets from Megascans, as well as this soil material from Instamat's built in library. So maybe let's just press play. As you can see, this is just the default Unreal Engine 5 template. And this is our wall, which consists of two parts. So we have the column here and the wall. This is the same column as this one. So it's also a modular asset that you can use in different circumstances. And I made this setup here to show you how it looks in real time, which is quite nice, I think. And yeah, in this first video, we will be doing the blockout in Blender which might be a bit boring, but it's part of the process, so I include it nonetheless. And I'm not quite sure how many videos this series will have, but I'm aiming for like maybe 10 each with a duration of 10 to 30 minutes maybe. And yeah, it was quite some work, so I hope you enjoy it and that it's also helpful for your projects. So I'd say let's just jump into Blender now and start the series. Okay, so in Blender we will do the block out. And again, this is probably the really most boring part of the whole series as we just need a few cubes. I also did some UV unwrapping. Also, we won't really need UVs for this project, but for competition, I wanted to have it in. And yeah, starting in Blender, I just added the cube. And I worked with the dimensions to have proper scaling. And I really don't know what it is, but I have the feeling that the scaling in Blender is a bit weird. I mean, I have quite a big object with Y in 3 meters and it's really small in the viewport. And I'm really not used to Blender. I don't use it often or don't use it regularly. So yeah, I don't know. I always have a bit of trouble working with it, but that's all I have at home. So I'm gonna use that. And yeah, after making this block, basically I did some UV unwrapping. I will also probably speed up some parts of this videos so that we skip the more boring parts. And yeah, here I'm marking some seams. Then the unwrap again where I missed, uh, missed an edge. And here I had the issue that I didn't freeze the transformations or how it's called in Blender or transforms. So the UVs didn't look right. So I did that and unwrapped it again. Again, I'm not really a Blender user, so this is just what I have at home. And as I don't use it really often, it's everything I need for such small tasks, uh, small and easy tasks. And yeah, after making the first block or cube, I just duplicated it to make the other one. So this will be our column. The one before was the wall. I wanted to have it a bit bigger, so I tried to dial it in. So a bit of resizing so that it looks nice. Again, it should have a bit more depth than the, uh, than the wall part. So we are again applying the transformations or transforms. And we also wanted to center the pivot, then back to UVs and unwrapping it again. So that's why I use the other part. So now for the top parts, again, I just reuse the things that we already made, skate them differently. Then I renamed it accordingly. Then I again unwrapped it and yeah again as we had the seams ready I just needed to unwrap and apply the transforms first and yeah again the UVs here are not really necessary as we won't use this mesh for much we we'll basically be just the guideline where I place the rocks and sculpt the mortar from it
And so, like you can see, the UVs are not the best and doesn't really matter. At least not for what we are going to do. Then I took this part and duplicated it. I think three times. Four times. Then I adjusted the mesh a bit. So I needed to have it flat on, on the wall because I wanted to have it modular so that we can use both parts together. Then I rescaled the wall part a bit and froze the, or applied the transforms again. Then unwrapped it again. So after this was finished, I wanted to have subdivisions for ZBrush to have more resolution. So we didn't use Catmull Clark, but simple, as Catmull Clark smooths the mesh. I made an undo because I wanted to have the low poly version and not have it deleted in case that we still need it for something. So I added a new collection and called it accordingly, then duplicated the rest of the mesh or all of the meshes and put them into the folder. So we now have a low poly version and a high poly version. And for the high poly, I subdivided it. I also included some more edge loops to have the mesh more regular. So we have really nice topology when importing it into ZBrush. I did the same for the wall and for the top parts. And yeah, that's basically all we will be doing in Blender. So we just need the block out to have something to place the rocks on and also sculpt the mortar from. So this was the more boring part, but again, I wanted to show it just to have a complete tutorial. And yeah, that's that for the first part. Thanks for watching and see you soon in the next one where we're gonna sculpt some rocks in ZBrush.